And our first speaker, ladies and gentlemen, is Janine J.J. Conway. She graduated from the Air Force Academy and was the first African-American to serve as a physicist in the Air Force, where she retired as a lieutenant colonel after 23 years. J.J. became a financial planner after returning from a six month military trip to discover her house sold, divorce papers, and over $845,000 in debt to her name. She now teaches others the same personal growth and financial management skills that allowed her to dump that debt and to begin building wealth. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Ms. JJ Conway. Thank you, Barry, for that welcome. I'm so excited to be here with the Power Voice Summit. Special kudos to my mentor, Les Brown, and John Tellerico. Y'all, when I started school, the teachers told my mom back in kindergarten, I was slow and I'd never really amount to much. My teachers wrote me off and so did most of the world around me. But my mom said not so. And she insisted upon a certain second grade teacher, Mrs. Gilmore, who was known to help slow kids succeed. Mrs. Gilmore, in that first progress report, she wrote the same thing the other two teachers had. I didn't really understand what was going on in school. But unlike those other two teachers, she made it her mission to work with me until by the end of the school year, she wrote that my reading and comprehension were on par with my grade level. I learned from my mom that early that when the world says you can't, you must say, I can and I will. The world is always going to try to put limitations on us. And if you know what I'm talking about, I want you to drop some likes and some loves and some comments right now, because the world is always trying to put limitations, but their limitations don't have to define our future. Most of the time, people are well-meaning, right? They're just trying to protect us from harm, from disappointment, from failure. And it's out of their desire to keep us safe that they tell us to play small. Now, there's some people who themselves are too disappointed in their own failures to really push you to be your best. But whatever the reason, Les Brown says, other people's opinion of you does not have to become your reality. Now, I worked hard in school and I was never the smartest kid in the room, but I was always the hardest working. This paid off when I received a coveted full ride scholarship to the Air Force Academy. Now, like many college students, I had trouble declaring my major. You see, I had straight A's in chem and math, but that was so boring to me, y'all. I couldn't see myself doing mathematical theory for a living. Physics wasn't my strongest class, but it was super cool to levitate magnets and design rocket ships. So even though the chemistry department welcomed me with open arms, I decided to interview the physics advisor before making a decision. Only he wasn't convinced that I was qualified. Well, why not? I got A's and B's in all my scientific and mathematical classes. I mean, all you needed was a B average and we kept going through this. See, I wasn't old enough or experienced enough back then to know how people do you when they don't want you around, how they come up with reason after reason why you can't achieve your goal. And I kept answering his reasons until he finally shouted out, blacks can't do physics. I couldn't believe my ears and I asked him to repeat himself. You can't do it. You won't make it. Blacks can't do physics. I'm going to tell you right now, when the world says you can't, you must say I can and I will. I declared physics and I made up my mind that you're not going to tell me what I can't do. Though a handful of my physics instructors did support me, I found myself rejected by many peers and most of the professors. I wasn't invited to the study groups, and it just seemed like most of my professors didn't have time for me when I would seek them out for extra instruction. One particular class got so hard, I seriously thought about quitting. I would go into the instructor's office for extra help, and I'd come out more confused than when I went in. After a couple months of this, on a day when all the other professors were gone, he leveled with me. Look, my job is to get rid of you. If you will stop coming in here, I will stop feeding you the wrong answers. 
Well, I stopped coming into his office and in 1997, as president of the Physics and Astronomy Club, I graduated from the Air Force Academy with a bachelor's degree in physics specializing in space. Not only was I the number five physics graduate, which earned me the last slot for a full ride master's degree, but this lady who was told blacks can't do physics, well, guess what? I went on to do physics for 23 years in the Air Force, being the first African-American to serve in that role and the first woman of color to serve in that role. And a lot of you today, you were the first person in your family to accomplish something. You were the first one to graduate from high school the first one to buy a house, the first doctor, the first nurse, the first business owner, the first teacher. If you've been the first to do something in your family, I want you to tell me about it in the comments because I'll bet you had a lot of people try to tell you you can't do it. I bet they tried to tell you not to waste your time. And I'll bet you found it to be true what Les Brown said that the greatest revenge is massive success. Oh, don't let anybody ever tell you you can't do it, y'all. After all, Aubrey Hepburn reminded us nothing is impossible. The word itself even says, I'm possible. So when the world says you can't, you must say, I can and I will. Halfway through my military career, I came home from a trip to find my household, stuff thrown out, divorce papers in my face. I was now a single military mother with over $845,000 of debt. People told me to walk away from my debts or to file bankruptcy. It was just too much. There's no way you could overcome that. That's what everybody said. But I couldn't file bankruptcy. I would lose my security clearance. And with it, the only job I knew how to do. I was not going to give up that easy because I couldn't afford to lose my job. I needed to put food on my table. You know, I always wonder when people tell you to give up, what exactly do they think you're going to do? Bankruptcy was not going to solve this. Albert Einstein said you cannot solve today's problems with the same level of thinking that created them. And when you want to make massive change in your life, when you have what appears to be an insurmountable obstacle blocking your way, it requires a creative new way of thinking in order to find a way forward. I learned how to hustle in a hurry, y'all. I learned how money worked and I learned how to teach classes on dumping debt and how to invest in real estate without going into more debt. I was fighting for my legacy and for my son. I now empower others to win with money using the same money management, real estate investment and business strategies that got me out of all that debt. 11 years later, I am retired from the Air Force. I am now a full-time mom by day and a full-time speaker, trainer, and coach by night. I'm here to tell you, when the world says you can't, you say, I can and I will. But y'all, a couple years ago came the biggest challenge of my life. Now, I know some of you are thinking, what could be worse than all of that that you just told us, right? Well, let me tell you what could be worse. Giving up. And too many of us have given up on our dreams. We've given up on our calling, on our gifting, on our greatness. We let our vast potential fall by the wayside because too many people tell us we can't. Or the enemy fights us in our thought life and we tell ourselves that we're not good enough, that we don't deserve it, that we aren't worthy. No matter how much we've accomplished, it seems like the next challenge is just too much. We forget all the times that the Lord opened the doors or strengthened us and we begin to yield to anxiety and depression. And that's exactly what I did after a car accident that left me with post-concussive syndrome and memory issues. Y'all, this scientist who used to write reports for the president, I couldn't even make monopoly change with my son. I thought my life was over. At work, I became the butt of many jokes as well as the office scapegoat like many of you have been when you fell on hard times. I was struggling and falling into despair, but I'm so glad a friend reminded me what I had told her all those years. When the world says you can't, you say I can and I will. I found the right doctors, the right supplements, the right diet, and today I run an international financial education company. Not perfectly, but well enough. And you don't have to be perfect, you are enough. I don't know what you're facing right now, I just know that life is a series of one challenge after another. I know we have to be intentional about remembering our past successes and reminding ourselves of our dreams, our gifting, our calling, our greatness. If you take nothing else away from this talk, 
Remember, when the world says you can't, you say, I can and I will. Before I go, I'd like to know how you feel. Drop something in the comments and I will personally respond to you. And if you'd like to learn more about how you can apply these lessons to your life, simply go and get my free course at rebrand.ly slash three easy. You will get absolutely free my mini course called three easy ways to win with money. I'm JJ Conway. Thank you for watching. Y'all take care, be blessed and enjoy the rest of the summit because greatness is still to come. All right, JJ, that was amazing, number one. And thank you for your service. That's one veteran to another. Uh, thank you so much for your service and how you're continuing to serve uh, with your, your financial uh, management company right now. And I'm sure you're impacting so many people right now. And, and with this, your power voice now being unleashed, you're going to continue to, to uh, impact and inspire so many. So thank you so very much. Thank you, Barry. Absolutely.